Good afternoon, everybody. We'll get started here in just a few minutes. Uh, excited to have you guys with us today to talk through driving accountability um, through your TVs and leaderboards. Um, so we'll get started, like I said, just a couple minutes and give people time to join. Appreciate you guys taking the time to meet with us. We'll give everybody one more minute. How's it going, Doug? Good to see you, man. <clears throat> Hope you guys are doing great. Perfect. Well, why don't we go ahead and get started, guys? This is a recording, and we'll make sure to get this out with our follow-up as well. So um, we'll go ahead and get started. I'll share my screen, and like I said, make sure we're getting, making the best use of you all's time today. So um, I'll go ahead and get this displayed for you, and we'll go from there. So oops. So again, guys, welcome to Ambition Office Hours. I know I see some familiar faces out here and you guys are uh, always great attendees. So again, wanted to thank you for that. Um, the focus for today, like I said, is going to be focusing on how we can help um, you guys drive accountability via Ambition uh, leaderboards and TVs. Uh, we're also gonna touch on a couple of different areas that uh, my counterpart, Michelle, will introduce in just a second. Uh, we'll take you through around uh, expanding those use cases into looking at things like workflows and, and different areas like that where you guys can drive accountability um, as you move forward. So again, my name is Chad Trofton. Um, I'm on the Enterprise Customer Success Team uh, and work with my counterpart, Michelle, here as well on the Enterprise Team um, to, uh, to support those customers in that segment and obviously drive as much value as we can for, for you guys out of the Ambition platform. <clears throat> So um, just a quick high level on the agenda for what we'll do and what we're planning to take you through today. So uh, I'm gonna spend some time taking you guys through Ambition TVs and how they can be best leveraged uh, with your teams. Uh, we'll do a little bit of a screen share. I'll jump into the product briefly. I built out some sample TVs as well. Um, take you through some TV best practices and then I'll turn it over to Michelle. Um, she's gonna take you through a couple of different leaderboard options, um, some workflows, metric-based notifications, things like that to really give you the, the lay of the land for you know, the best way many of our customers and many of our folks that we manage in the enterprise side are using Ambition to drive accountability. Um, and then lastly, we'll wrap up with some, some, some recent updates from our product team as well. So uh, that's kind of the lay of the land for today. Please, please feel free to answer, ask questions. We'll try to answer them um, as, quick, as quickly as we can. If we don't get to them while we're in the process of presenting, we'll make sure we try to address them um, towards the end of the call today. So. Again, really excited to have you guys here, and uh, we'll go ahead and get started. So, um, wanted to take this at a high level. You know, what are what are the vision for TVs, right? What can we do from Ambition TVs? I know that so many of you guys are still trying to figure out what the the lay of the land is. Your teams maybe are a hybrid model, maybe they're back in the office, maybe you've got some home. Um, you know, or uh, many of our customers are still fully remote. So. Uh, we're trying to find ways that, you know, we can leverage TVs to drive that accountability, to do that in a remote setting, being able to leverage the fact that Ambition TVs are URL based, so they can be shared out with anybody on your team. Uh, they can be shared out with leaders that maybe aren't even in Ambition to drive more visibility to the work and the wins that your teams are having. So uh, we really wanted to help drive, you know, how does Ambition drive, you know, that accountability there? You can see, you know, that we found, uh, you know, nearly a third of your sales reps that their most motivated factor is being able to visualize those numbers. So getting those numbers out there in front of the, you know, whether that's you know, leveraging ambition, they're going to have that in front of them on their dashboards, getting those numbers up on TVs is kind of taking that to the next level, getting them publicly recognized for their wins, you know, shouting out the progress that your teams are making. So much of that can help and, and drive that accountability side of the house that we're trying to, to deliver to, to leaders like you all and that what you guys are trying to get out of the tool. Additionally, uh, you know, being able to leverage TVs for that recognition side of the house, you know, being able to leverage, you know, people's customized experiences with their anthems, with their gifts within TVs. They're getting publicly recognized for the, the wins and the call outs and the accomplishments that they get via things like our workflows and, and stuff like that to your TVs that you've already built out. Uh, but then being able to recognize them, you know, publicly on that TV is such a, a powerful piece of that. So 
again, it's, it's about driving accountability by getting those numbers out in public, you know, whether they're, you know, you're having a struggling, a quarter that your team's struggling, you know, putting those up there and visualize it can help drive that accountability. I say, Hey guys, we've got a long way to go, but let's work together. Let's put a plan in place. Um, let's get these numbers up and do everything we can to continue to drive organizational targets. Um, as far as, you know, the motivation, like I said, being able to leverage some of the tools that we've already built out with workflows, uh, with the different styles of leaderboards I'll take you guys through. Um, so much of that is going to help drive that motivation and then continuing to be, to build on that. I've got triggers in here because we've got some customers that are still in that, but hopefully most of you guys are putting plans in place to migrate triggers into workflows. Uh, workflows is basically our triggers 2.0 development. So it's taking it to the next level. We're trying to add more and more functionality to what workflows can deliver for you. And, and I know Michelle is going to talk a little bit about that uh, later today as well. So that being said, that's kind of the intro I want to take you guys through what our vision is, what we want to, your teams to be able to get out of TVs. Um, I know sometimes it can feel like, ah, they're not looking at it, things like that. But I think if you make it a focus of your teams, it can be such a powerful tool. I know that during, and I'm sure Michelle has customers like this as well, during COVID, um, several customers leveraged their TVs to like run their weekly standups, their, you know, their monthly team meetings, because they can pause in presentation mode and click through their leaderboards and show how their team stacks up, show how their team versus teams are looking across their, their, their geo footprint and things like that. So again, there's a lot more to TVs than just being, you know, songs going off and anthems. It really can be a, a centralized hub that helps take everything in ambition and bring it all into one place um, and kind of make that a very cohesive experience as you move forward. So I'm going to transition now and just kind of show high level. I know that all of you guys are familiar with TVs, uh, but just wanted to share some of the capabilities. So I pulled together just a quick screenshot of a, uh, you know, multi-metric leaderboard out here uh, and allow you guys to, to see that there is functionality to show several different metrics in one place. Each of these metrics can be on a different time frame. So you could have new leads today, emails last week, appointments set this month. And each of these data points can be fully customized to the level that you need them to be to provide the level of data that you're looking to get out of the platform. So again, tons of flexibility there uh, to be able to pull this out. I want to, uh, I'm going to quickly stop sharing uh, and I'm going to um, jump into and display the, uh, <clears throat> my actual instance now and show you guys some things that I've built out to show how kind of the rubber might be able to hit the road there. So I'm uh, quickly going to reshare now that I've got my instance up. Uh, uh, Michelle, can you see this? Is it was working now? Yep, you're good. Perfect. Um, so I built out a TV here for the leaderboard. So obviously you're going to come out to your TV hub and you're going to be able to click your link here. Um, for those of the folks maybe a little bit newer to Ambition, um, this actual is the URL that is your physical TV. Um, so you can have unlimited number of TVs. You can have TVs focused on certain metrics. You know, it's really up to you guys to figure out, you know, what maybe what provides the level of data you were looking for and what your, your reps are looking to get out of their TVs as well. Um, so if we wanted to jump in the TV itself, we can choose this URL right here. Or if we wanted to make edits, we can jump out here. So for today, we're just going to go ahead and we're going to view this TV. So I'm going to put this in presentation mode, like I mentioned earlier, that I have several customers using this to, to drive one-on-ones. So what this has done, as you guys know, Ambition TVs, uh, is, the slides exist as basically a carousel. So um, typically defaults to a 20 second rotation. Um, but if you wanted to like say, lead a meeting off of this, you can turn off using this, uh, this gear wheel up here, you can turn on presentation mode. And what that does is allow you to turn off the carousel timer and basically be able to click through this in real time. So, um, I built out a number of different styles of leaderboards I wanted to share with you guys to show different ways you can drive accountability and also some different ways you can drive recognition to reps that maybe aren't you know, always the front runners. Um, so what I've got here, what you guys can see is uh, it's appointment set leaderboard. So again, um, this is my team. So there's gonna be 10 folks on here. And what you're seeing, probably Chad, what do these numbers mean, Chad? So um, I wanted to shout out you know, folks that maybe are my team that are struggling to get recognized, but they're kind of in that middle of the pack. And we want to continue to, to move them, you know, move that middle. That's that, the buzzword that we're all working towards in the sales org. How do we help move the middle pack of our teams to drive more and more value and more and more productivity out of this, that group? Uh, what we've developed is some different styles of leaderboards. So we've got uh, right here, I built out the most improved rankings. So you can see here, you know, Russ was ranked 105 last month in appointments set in the company, and now he's number six. That's a fantastic win. You want to be able to shout that out. You want to be able to call those folks out. Um, even if it's somebody that went from, you know, uh, went from like 99th to 50th, you will still want to be able to shout those folks out. And in current state, if you did that, you'd have to go pull an Excel you know, a report, a 
snapshot one, snapshot another, run some analytics on your side, build a macro, figure out where the changes were, and then go put a, put a presentation together. Doing this and leveraging different styles of leaderboards and ambition, it's going to do that for you automatically and pull those numbers in. So um, again, can leverage most improved uh, ranking. We can look at, uh, additionally, I wanted to pull this in just to show this is not you know, obviously a leaderboard, uh, but a different, a different way to show accountability and to drive that within your TV. So you can use and leverage ambition analytics. So for this example, I wanted to show what's the correlation between appointments set and appointments held. You know, so many times the SDRs book appointments, but then, you know, then that, that prospect doesn't show up. You know, let's start looking at what that correlation is between the appointments that we're booking and the appointments that are actually showing up and they're being held and drive that accountability and start seeing those insights. Uh, additionally, being able to build on that and pull in metric slides. So again, not a leaderboard, but at the team level, you can pull in uh, team performance. It's always going to be off of a previous time frame. So if you wanted to see daily performance, it's going to be how do you perform today versus yesterday. Uh, for, for this example, you're looking at uh, this month versus last month. Um, as your numbers increase, so as these new opportunities go up, as it cre creeps closer to 39, um, these bars will turn more to green. And then as you, if you ever exceed, say this month, this team exceeds um, 39 new opportunities, uh, this will actually turn to a flaming GIF. So it will just call out very visually for your teams that have done a great job and they've exceeded uh, their performance you know, period of time over period of time, whichever that, that cadence is. Uh, so again, just trying to highlight so many different ways within the TVs to show different levels of accountability. Um, I didn't put anything on here for goals because I wanted to make sure we kept a focused area, but that's also another way. You could visualize any goals that you have for your team. Bring those into your TVs. Keep everything that you're working on with your teams, your competitions, your goals. Send your accolades to Ambition TVs, and it can really start to be a critical piece of your team. They're going to go out to their TV. They're going to want to see it. They're going to want to go see those updates uh, as well. So just trying to, to touch on all the different ways that I think of and I see different enterprise customers leveraging their TVs to drive accountability forward. Um, the last couple of slides I'll touch on today uh, are going to be these multi-metric leaderboards. So again, I'm sure you guys are all familiar with these, uh, but I think this is very powerful in terms of how you can engage a team. So first off, being able to put five metrics on a leaderboard, obviously the first metric that you deem the top metric is going to drive the actual ranking over here. So you can see here calls is what's delineating the, the, the one through 10 ranking. And then I was able to build an additional four metrics on any time frame that I want them. So I pulled an activity score, percent to target, um, you can use percent to target for activity score and objective score, show how people are tracking towards that. Um, additionally, I pulled on these metrics and I'll show them at different levels. You can see here, um, this is uh, basically the showing you can have uh, most improved rank, most improved value, uh, which would be, let me see your, uh, your email performance month over month. You can see here, we're only halfway through the month. So um, Sam's halfway to nearly halfway to where he was last month. So he's got some hustling to do, but if he closes out the, the second half of the month, he should be able to get close to where he was last month. Um, and additionally, you can see here, we can start looking at rankings. You can see, you know, Sam had a great month last month. He was sixth in appointment set. And this month, he's, uh, he's 42nd. So again, you can start seeing those, those changes. You can start identifying them without having to do analytics on your side. Um, and again, customize the timeframes for each of these metrics. So a lot of flexibility, a lot of customization that you can do to make sure that this is perfectly tailored to what you would want your teams to see. Um, and the last one I'll show here is just, again, you can put in, you know, uh, uh, most improved rank, most improved value. Here's, this is the most improved value. So you can see here, we're gonna see Frank, how he can continue to climb up the calls leaderboard and get closer to where he was last month. Um, again, he's, he, we're only about halfway through the month, so he's got some time left. So um, I know I've run through a lot in a short amount of time, but I wanted to make sure that uh, we touched on different capabilities and I helped you guys visualize that. Uh, additionally, uh, some other recommendations I see would be, uh, you know, adding messaging, you know, uh, add some message slides for things like, you know, whether it's, uh, hey, guys, make sure you're going and filling out your open enrollment paperwork, make sure you're completing your your one on ones, make sure you know, everything that you can do there to drive more eyes to ambition TVs is really going to help uh, drive more visibility of those numbers and more accountability for your teams as well. So uh, I'm going to switch gears now and jump back into the presentation and talk through a few uh, best practices that we put together um, around TVs and what I've seen it's working for, for customers. Uh, so as you guys can take this through and put kind of put in your playbook uh, going forward. So um, first things first, is showcasing your whole team. I, I just kind of exhaustively took you guys through leveraging most improved rank and value. But the important thing is there is showcasing that like you guys are going to have those front runners. You're always going to have the folks in your team that consistently rank towards the top of the group in terms of performance. 
Um, but again, trying to move that middle, recognizing more and more folks by leveraging most improved rankings, most improved values is a really, really important tool to showcase more reps, to make reps feel that they're being seen, even if they're not part of that, you know, top performer class day in and day out um, and continually drive more engagement and recognition through the, through your platform there. Additionally, make it fun. You know, have, ask your reps what they want to see on their TVs. Ask your reps what kind of competitions they might want to be a part of. Ask them to see what kind of metrics they want to see on their leaderboards. Um, and then allow them to customize their, their, uh, their gifts and anthems, to have a personalization in there. As you said, workflows to your TVs, those can fire off. They're going to get publicly recognized using their, uh, the accolades you've built for them. The workflows are going to shout out and they're going to fire their, uh, their anthems off. They're going to have their names on leaderboards. As much recognition as we can put in these TVs as possible is going to drive more value for you. It's going to drive more engagement with your teams, but it's ultimately going to lead to more, uh, more performance in most cases and also more accountability across when folks are struggling. Um, so again, just a great way to make this something that's not just a, um, you know, a tool that's going to show their numbers, but also allow them to be recognized, called out and have fun while doing that. So, you know, having your managers customize branding, you know, having their, if they've got team logos or they've got team, you know, mascots that they really go after, um, you know, allowing, this can be a great path to explore, you know, making uh, ambition TVs an engaging, fun place for your reps as well. Um, and then the last piece, uh, leveraging it for wins in real time. So, um, you know, uh, Michelle's going to talk a little bit about workflows later on, but being able to leverage those workflows and I know current state, some of you guys are probably still in triggers, but leveraging triggers with your TVs um, is again, going to be more way to, to getting those folks recognized in real time. It's going to get their anthems playing on the floor. Even if your reps are remotely, you know, they're going to get to see if they've got the TV up in the background on like a different tab or a monitor. They're going to get to see when workflows go off as well. So um, again, I think it's just a, a great way to leverage and engage your teams. Um, and really excited to, to see, you know, Michelle take you guys through the rest of the ways we, we really put together some, some path forward on an engagement and, um, you know, accountability as we push forward with ambition. So I'm going to stop sharing now and let uh, Michelle take you guys through um, some additional content that we walk through around, like I said, on leveraging some of the new technologies we've got, leveraging some of the integrations and the stuff we're doing with workflows. Uh, but again, just trying to build more and more about what we can do for you all out of the TV sections. Awesome. Thanks, Chad. All right. So as Chad alluded to, um, there are many ways that we can utilize a lot of this information in either a work from home or kind of that, that remote environment that some of us continue to operate in. Uh, one of the great things about that work or the TVs is that it can be, you know, either displayed in office or in that URL um, in the manner that Chad kind of mentioned a little bit, just as he was showing you guys. Um, so some really cool things that you guys can do there. If you do have questions, feel free to, you know, obviously put them in the chat here and we can try to get to them today. You can reach out to your CSM. If you don't have a CSM, the support team as well um, is always available to help. And we do have a lot of resources and help docs that we'll make sure to include in the blog and the email um, so that you guys can get, you know, how to tutorials for all the information that we're covering today. So I'll take you through three different types of workflows, which again is the new system for the triggering uh, system, which we had previously done, which allows you guys to send out notifications. So the first type of workflow is a scheduled leaderboard. The idea behind the scheduled leaderboard is that you can provide those insights, share those, you know, top rankings, whether it's individuals or teams or groups for a specific metric um, at, you know, over a specific time frame. So a couple good examples of these scheduled leaderboards that we see are you know, sending a closed one um, stack rank at the end of the week, or maybe it's a activity leaderboard at noon each and every workday. Um, so we can see how individuals are, are stacked up for, for again, these different metrics. Um, the endpoints for the scheduled leaderboards are Slack, Microsoft Teams, or email notifications. So these scheduled leaderboards would not send to the TVs because you've already got that leaderboard functionality built into those TVs. So again, think through, you know, what is the stack rank that I might want my team focused on? What time of the day, what time of the week, what time of the month do I need them looking at these, um, these different metrics? And that's how we can utilize the scheduled leaderboard. So top performers is one great way to use those scheduled leaderboards. Another way to do that is more of kind of like a proactive notification. So, hey, I really want to, you know, highlight people that are off track, that are not doing the activity that, um, you know, that I want uh, them to be doing. So a great example of this is um, a 10 by 10. So you expect your calls first thing in the morning, 
to hit the phones. We want everybody on the East Coast by 10 a.m. They should have made 10 calls, right? That probably means to you as a manager, they've gotten their day started, they're, they're up and they're moving. If they haven't done that, maybe you want that proactive notification sent out to you as a manager and sent out to those reps knowing, you know, showing them, hey, I'm keeping an eye on these numbers. Um, I'm holding you accountable to, you know, to this threshold. Um, but again, the 10 by 10 is just one example. If it's not calls for your organization, what is it? Is it hitting, you know, three um, new opportunities created by midway through the month or, um, you know, having five meetings set by Wednesday afternoon at four, whatever those type of notifications are that you need to, to generate um, to kind of get your team moving, push them in the right direction. Um, I think email is a great way to utilize this, but, you know, again, using Slack or Microsoft Teams as an endpoint uh, is also a great option for these scheduled leaderboards. The second type of workflow, a oh, couple examples here. <laughs> this is what it's actually going to look like in your Microsoft Teams. So it does include the GIFs. So if your um, team members are personalizing their profiles, adding GIFs, um, those will display here, which is kind of cool. So it's, you know, really calling them out. Um, and then this on the right hand side is more of, you know, what that email notification is going to look like. So we're going to include their numbers and, you know, there's no limit, I think, to the number of individuals included in this email. So feel free to include your entire team. All right. The second type of workflow that we've got is a metric based alert. The idea behind a metric based alert is I want to know when somebody hits a specific threshold or, you know, level associated with a metric and a time frame. So one example that we have, um, it's actually what we've been doing here at Ambition. We've got, um, or we had an issue. We were not focusing enough on the SDRs and BDRs here at the organization. They're kind of like the, you know, the, the grunt job of the organization. So we wanted to create a better way for us to really celebrate those wins. And so we created the streak pot and a huge shout out to our SDR team for this idea. Um, but the streak pot was, you know, every time an SDR does not hit hundred on their activity score in a day, uh, they add a dollar to the streak pot. Um, so, you know, at some point during the month, there's a couple dollars in there, hopefully not too many. Um, and whoever hits four meetings set in a day wins that streak pot. So, you know, they get a small amount of money, but enough to kind of really celebrate that win for us hitting four meetings in a day, um, is a really big deal and something worth celebrating. So we set up a couple of different triggers. So when you hit three meetings in a day, it sends to the ambition channel, the whole organization sees that you've hit three in that day. And it says, can you get one more? Can you push to get that number four? Which again, is that, you know, big celebration that we wanted. Um, so we've created these different thresholds. We want to send out that notification. So the whole team can start to really celebrate those wins, push those reps um, to go a little bit further. Um, what's a, you know, a really great story come out of this is we've actually beat our record. Um, I think every month for the last like three months. So now we're hitting like seven meetings in a day. Um, so some really cool things have come out of this. Uh, but building that momentum, helping push uh, reps towards that, that higher level. These notifications can go to the TV. So unlike the leaderboards, these ones go to the TV, Slack, Microsoft Teams, or email. So really any of those options here are a great use case for the metric-based alert. The third and final type is a records-based alert. The idea behind the records is I want a notification you know, every time a new opportunity is created. Maybe that's something that as a manager, you want to see those opportunities coming through. Um, another really cool thing about these record-based alerts is you can actually include data from, you know, you know, Salesforce or whatever that system, so whatever's included in that record. Uh, so maybe it's an opportunity name, maybe it's a specific contact. Um, so we can start to see, you know, how high are these meetings set um, or it's an opportunity that's been created or closed one. And we want to start to see some of those deal numbers, whether that's ACV, TCV, in our case, total number of seats created. Uh, but there's a lot of information that you can include in these records-based alerts. Um, and you also kind of get to be a little bit specific. Is there a different threshold for, you know, our new hires? Do I want to, you know, celebrate every single closed one opportunity? Or maybe it's, you know, for a more tenured rep celebrating every closed one opportunity over a thousand dollars. So whatever makes the most sense for your organization, um, you can include that in these record-based alerts. Um, you are filtering down to specific lo logic. So again, we can get really, um, really uh, tight about exactly what we want to celebrate. All right, jump in to some best practices. Um, so I would say when you're building these workflows and thinking about, you know, how you want to set them out for your organization, find a mix of those real time and the scheduled workflows. So sending to TV, Slack, Teams and email also, you know, kind of mixing it up. So we want our big deal alert sending to the executive channel. 
um, as well as our recognition channel, but maybe some of these like smaller wins, like hitting 50 calls in a day is only going to be sent to our team channel. Um, so you can, again, be a little bit more customized um, and specific about where we want these triggers sending and at what cadence. Um, align to those key milestones or thresholds for both individual contributors and teams. So if we wanted to work as an organization or as one specific SDR team or manager team, and we have a goal of hitting 50 meetings this month, you can actually build those triggers and workflows again to look at those specific um, groups uh, that you want to celebrate. Also recommend building workflows to celebrate those correct expectations in line with those roles or levels of development. So I mentioned this a little bit earlier for our new hires group hitting 25 calls in a day, maybe we're celebrating, whereas our more tenured reps, um, 60 calls in a day is, is the threshold for those, for those team members or, you know, customizing it based on, you know, which specific deals are worth um, celebrating to the, to the larger group. We do recommend tagging in senior leadership to some of those, um, you know, more exciting uh, recognition of things that they need to have some visibility into. One of the nice things about that is it allows that senior leadership um, to get that visibility without putting in that effort. So if you're tagging them on an email thread or something, and they can then shout out that, shout out that rep, um, I think that's a really neat way to get them involved um, without kind of making them go that extra, extra mile. But it's always great as an individual contributor to get that shout out um, to realize that your effort is being, being seen by those senior level leaders. So I think that's, um, that's a great play to use. And then we do recommend reevaluating those triggers um, quarterly at a minimum, making sure that we're only celebrating the wins that make the most sense. If you see a bunch of people hitting a target, maybe we need to increase that target now that you know the team is more comfortable with these, these metrics, whatever that might be. Um, and then also get feedback from your reps, your managers, your executives, what type of information has been helpful um, because we do want to make sure that we're finding that right cadence, that this information is not distracting, that it's not overwhelming, but we are able to celebrate those small and those large wins along the way. Um, we'll include some help links, uh, again, in the blog post and um, in the email follow-up with the recording, um, because I know that we've covered a lot of really important information today, so don't, don't fret, you'll get that information. Um, and then a couple of product updates that I think are worth covering today, the first one being saved leaderboard filters. So if you're accessing your ambition um, profile, you go into the leaderboards tab, change up a couple of filters. We used to recommend actually bookmarking those um, specific filters, but now you can actually save it. So you can say, this is the exact team that I want to look at. This is the time frame and the metric that I check in on the most. Go ahead, save that filter. Um, so that you can easily access it the next time. One thing to note about this, you go ahead and save a, um, you know, a filter. So I, as Michelle, I go in and save it. Chad won't be able to see those saved filters. So it is specific um, to your profile, um, but encourage your reps. This is a great, a great one for, for them to start to use, help them get into ambition, get to exactly what they need to see a little bit faster. We also have a few new agenda items for coaching. So we've got multiple choice options. So if you wanted to do some like yes, no, true, false options, those are now available. Um, and then also check boxes, I think is a great another use case. So it can be, you know, where do you need help as a rep? Check all that apply, something that you're sending out to the entire team to quickly gather some feedback. Um, these are turned on in your instance today. So if you're building a new program or a new check-in, these will start to show, again, if you're also editing a program, you can now choose these options. There's nothing that you need to, to go on and do. Um, they were added to the help documentation for both the one-off check-ins and the program. So you'll see uh, that inside the existing documentation. And then the third big release that we've got is a Gong coaching integration. This is in beta. So if you have questions about this, I would recommend reaching out to, again, your CSM or the support team to get a little bit more information. The idea is if you are already using Gong and you, you're a customer of Gong, um, we can add that into your coaching conversation. So you can start to, you know, pin specific calls that your reps want to review or you as a manager um, want to dive into during um, those one-on-ones or we can see a list of previous Gong um, conversations. Again, this one's in beta. Let us know if you have any questions. Um, and that's it. That's all we had for you guys today. We really appreciate um, your time and your dedication coming here. Uh, to learn a little bit um, more about how to drive accountability um, through TVs and these workflow features. We are running these office hours once a month. 
um, you can see in the link to register all of the different topics. So if there's something that you're specifically interested in, please go ahead and register, share these um, office hour links and recording um, with your other team members, whether it's you know managers or um, more of that senior level leadership. I think these most of these calls are really relevant um, to managers and admins alike. Um, I'm going to go ahead and check the chat. It doesn't look like we have any questions. Chad, anything I missed that you think that we should cover today? I don't think so. I definitely want to make sure we open up the floor to you guys to see if there's anything we can touch on. Um, I know TVs are a pretty straightforward tool, but I, th I think they're, they can be leveraged correctly. Um, they, uh, they can be very, very powerful. Um, so definitely open any questions, any ideas. If you guys want to run scenarios by us or anything like that, where we're definitely here to answer anything we can. So please feel free to, to ask any open questions you might have. Okay. If not, we might end a few minutes early today, um, but please reach out to your CSM or the support team if there is anything um, we can do for you. We're here to help. Thanks guys. Thanks everybody.